So you technically don't need any gear to deadlift but I highly recommend that you have these three things. The first one is a weight belt. This is called the Inzer Forever Lever Belt. It is the best. This is the 10 millimeter version, and you can get this at inzernet.com, I-N-Z-E-R. So I'll put a link to that in the description. This doesn't really make the exercise any safer, contrary to what people used to think, but it will skyrocket your performance if you use one of these things. It also helps to encourage good form. The second thing that I would encourage you to have is some chalk. <laughs> Check with your gym on making sure that you can bring this into the gym. A lot of gyms like aren't cool with it. Um, that'll help your grip. If you are serious about improving your deadlift form, your technique, and how much weight you can pull, I highly recommend investing in a good pair of chains. You can get these on Amazon. They're not very expensive, and they have them that are designed specifically to fit an Olympic barbell. Now. If you use chains, which I always do when I do heavy conventional deadlifts, it's safer and most importantly, it will dramatically improve your lift. They are great for deadlifts. They are great for squats. They are great for the bedroom. They're basically great for everything. Here's why they work so well, because the starting position of a deadlift is where your lower back is the most vulnerable. So it makes the exercise lightest at the bottom part of the movement. So a lot of people say, well, why wouldn't you just do rack pulls and start from a higher position? Well, then you're not really working your lower back and your glutes from a fully stretched position and getting much of a range of motion. It's too isometric. So if you wanna get the most benefit out of your deadlift, use chains so it's light at the bottom, but then it gets really heavy at the top. Now it encourages, it naturally encourages proper form because you know that the heaviest part of the move is gonna be once you're almost to the top. So naturally, it's gonna force you to start with great form and explode up as hard as you can so that you can get past that sticky point. It'll help your lockout of the exercise. And the coolest part is your back is mostly fast twitch fibers, so your upper back responds best to overloading it with heavy weight. So at the top, when it's the heaviest, that's when it's the safest to hold that much weight. And so watch your upper back grow and watch your deadlift form massively improve. Before you start, make sure that you record yourself with your smartphone because you'll pick up all kinds of stuff regarding your form that you had no idea you were doing unless you go back and actually look at these recordings. You're gonna start by loading up a standard Olympic barbell with bumper plates. Make sure that you have hard soled shoes so that you have a solid foundation to push from. Squat shoes are not ideal if you're powerlifting but I'm training for mass, so I like them because it creates a little bit of a deficit, so I get to pull the bar further. Personal preference. Next, you're gonna approach the bar and start with your shins touching or at a maximum one inch from the bar. At no point in the lift should the bar be further than one inch away from your legs. This is how lifting careers end. Your arms should be straight up and down, perpendicular from the ground, with your knees just inside the arms. You can grip the bar with a standard pronated grip, but if you're going heavy, this grip will quickly fail and you will probably want to use a mixed grip in which one hand is pronated and the other is supinated. My personal preference is a mixed monkey grip. See my video on monkey grips if you haven't yet. Monkeys don't wrap their thumbs around tree branches when they're swinging around in the jungle. As a matter of fact, they only use the ends of their fingers, so many lifters, myself included, favor the same grip as our primate friends, which is surprisingly a strong grip once you're used to it. Don't worry about muscle imbalances from the mixed grip. Simply switch hands every set and you'll work each side evenly by the end. Now you're going to bend over at the waist while keeping an arched back position. It is helpful to think of the outside edge of each individual vertebrae connecting to each other just like the cow yoga pose. Your butt position will vary depending on how long your legs are, but in general, your back should be a little above parallel to the ground. Remember, this is a hip dominant movement. It's not a squat off the ground. Begin by taking a very, very deep breath and hold your breath until the lockout for maximum focus and power. Be sure to exhale completely before lowering the bar and beginning your next rep. From here, you will perform what is essentially two exercises in rapid succession a horizontal shrug, and a leg press. The first critical move is to shrug the slack out of the bar. This move is the same as a horizontal cable or barbell shrug. You can see my video on that. This will brace your upper back and lift your chest to a safe, 
powerful starting position before your legs push. Yes, I said push. While the deadlift is technically considered a pull exercise, you want to think of it as a push. The idea of pulling is dangerous and in the past it's caused me to try to muscle the bar up with my back which has resulted in a herniated disc. Learn from my mistake. In terms of pushing, think of it this way, like the earth is a giant leg press and the bar is an immovable object. Use the bar as a hinge to push the earth away from you. Please resist the temptation to round your back. Rounding will give you the ability to pull more weight, but at the expense of an inevitable lumbar spine injury. I used to round my back every deadlift day, and the sciatic pain I developed made it almost impossible to get in and out of bed. If you maintain a strict back position, you will still work all the muscles just as effectively and much more safely. Consciously push with your quads, your glutes, and your hamstrings until you are fully upright. The feeling of holding the bar at waist level is a satisfying sense of power. From here, you have a choice of lowering the bar in a slow, controlled manner or dropping it. This depends on whether you're working on your one rep max or if you're pushing your muscles to the max. Usually, I lower it slower and controlled. Timing. The shrug and the leg press should be timed in rapid succession. When you start, you might want to shrug first for, and just hold it for a split second before pressing with the legs. As you advance and become more comfortable with both components of the lift, this will become one fluid motion. You may hear the term touch and go deadlift. This is when you bounce the bar up and down off the floor with every rep. As a matter of fact, it's technically not a deadlift at all. It's like a bounce lift. If your goal is to move as much weight as you can from point A to point B, then you can go around a forklift. But if you want to build strength, then let the bar settle and deaden between each rep. If you find yourself still rounding your back, Record yourself and make sure that your hips aren't rising up at the beginning of the lift. I did this for years and it's a hard habit to break. Again, think of the deadlift as a leg press. Do you ever shoot your hip upward on a leg press? Of course not. The hips should drive downward into the ground. Last thing is please follow safe sanitary practices. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment or hit me up on any of my social media platforms.